Hello all. In this video, we will study dynamic scoping with shallow binding and dynamic scoping with deep binding. So consider the following pseudo code. Right? This is the code which is given to us. We want to know what does this program print if the language uses dynamic scoping with shallow binding. Okay. Now when we solve questions of this nature wherein the language is using dynamic scoping and then the binding rules are shallow or deep whatever what we tend to do is we tend to create referencing environments referencing environment right So since it is dynamic scoping, what we do is we directly start the execution. The execution begins from main. So as soon as you call a procedure, we create a referencing environment for that procedure. The referencing environment consists of non-local compartment and local compartment. NL stands for non-local, L stands for local. Now main's non-local compartment is nil. Why? Because main is not called by anyone. Main is the first procedure called. So main does not have access to any non-local variables. So its non-local compartment is main. But when you look at its local compartment, it has its own copy of x with value 0. With value zero. Okay. Now this is the code for main. So we call procedure 1 over here. As soon as you call procedure 1, we create referencing environment for 1. We call procedure 1 from main. So in the non-local compartment for procedure 1, we copy everything from main. Everything from main will include mains x. But when control comes to procedure 1, procedure 1 has its own copy of x with value 2. So 1 has its own copy of x with value 2. Since it has its own copy of x with value 2, it won't access main 6. Main 6 is not accessed by procedure 1. Now, here when you look at this statement, we are calling procedure 2. Since we are calling procedure 2, we create referencing environment for 2. First, we create non local referencing environment for 2. Now, 2 is called from 1, so everything from 1 is copied into the non-local compartment for 2. So we write once x. And then we have a local compartment. When you look at procedure 2, procedure 2 has p, which is nothing but procedure 3. And procedure 2 also has its own x with value 1. Since procedure 2 has its own x, it won't access main 6. Okay. And now we call procedure p. We know what is p. p means 3. So now 3 is actually called. Since 3 is actually called, we will create referencing environment for 3. First non-local. Now when we create referencing environment for 3, the execution control is in 2, right? Here we call procedure 3. And at that time, the control is in procedure 2. So we take help from 2. So everything from 2 will be copy pasted into 3. So we are going to access 2's x. When you think of local compartment, procedure 3 does not have any variables declared in it. So it's nil. And then we are printing the value of x. So in procedure 3, and procedure 3 has access to 2x. So with shallow binding, the output is 2x, which happens to be 1. So with dynamic scoping, shallow binding, the output is 
1. Okay, now we will see what happens with dynamic scoping with deep binding. Right. Again, we have dynamic scoping rules, so we have referencing environment. But now we have deep binding. Okay. Most of the things would remain same, like first I'll call main, main's non-local compartment is nil because main is the first procedure called main has its own copy of x with value 0 then main calls 1 as you can see over here it calls 1 so we create referencing environment for 1 first we create non-local compartment 1 is called from main 1 is called from main so everything from main is copied here so we take main 6 and then when you think of local one has its own copy of x with value 2 since one has its own copy of x with value 2 it won't access main 6 now the real difference lies over here in this statement with shallow binding you only created referencing environment for 2 why because 2 was called you have not created referencing environment for 3 right away. You created referencing environment for 3 when 3 was actually called. But now here when you look at 2 and 3, you will create referencing environment for 2 as well as for 3 simultaneously. This will happen in case of deep binding. This will happen in case of what? Deep binding. That referencing environment for 2 as well as for 3 will be created right away. And when we are doing this, the execution control is in 1. Since we are creating referencing environment for 2 and 3 simultaneously, the execution control is in 1. So we take help from 1. So everything from 1 is copied here. So we take means. Sorry. Still. We take help from 1 so we take 1 6 here also we take 1 6 right because 1 has its own copy of everything from 1 is copy pasted here now what we have called is 2 so this is 2 so 2 has its own copy so p is a variable which value 3 and this referencing environment is now known as p this is known as p this referencing environment p is now known as name p and 2 also has its own x as you can see over here its value is 1 okay now when you call procedure p you need not create the referencing environment for p because referencing environment for p is already created right so you simply call procedure p p is nothing but 3 as you know so you call procedure 3 3 does not have any local variables declared in it so it is nil and now we are printing the value of x in procedure 3, procedure 3 has access to 1, 6 and 1, 6 is 2. So the output is 2. It will print 1, x which is 2. So with dynamic scoping, deep binding, this program will print 2. I hope you have understood. Thank you.